Hi, I'm Caitlin from Enthusen. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about something called glutamate excitotoxicity. Now, glutamate is a very important neurotransmitter. Um, it's probably the most abundant neurotransmitter in your entire body, and it plays a very fundamental role in basic sort of brain activity. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes what can happen is glutamate um, can bind excessively to a nerve cell and overexcite it and cause it to sort of short circuit and fry out. Glutamate is an excitatory neurotransmitter, so when enough glutamate is binding, um, it causes what's called an action potential in a cell and causes the cell to release its electrochemical uh, signals uh, to be received by other cells, which is how brain activation works. Um, like I said though, when glutamate is binding excessively, it can cause something called excitotoxicity, where the cell gets overexcited, and this can actually lead to the mitochondria um, opening its pore and releasing free radical compounds that cause oxidative damage to the cell. And this can cause DNA damage, tissue damage, um, dendrite damage, and actually cell death or apoptosis. So it's bad. <laughs> So what happens when glutamate excitotoxicity is occurring? Well, as I said, um, oxidative stress is going on, and what that can cause is inflammation and damage in the cell. So what tends to happen is, you know, we have these um, branch-like structures on the nerve cell that they extend to other branch-like branch -like structures on other nerve cells, and in between, they have this tiny little space called uh, the synaptic cleft, and what happens is one cell will release a chemical signal, and they will get carried over to the other cell, and that's how cell-to-cell -cell communication is happening um, in nerve cells. Now, unfortunately, when some of those those long branch-like structures, the dendrites, when they get damaged or inflamed, they can actually degenerate and shrivel up and, and sort of be destroyed. So what ends up happening is you get a sort of sickly looking shriveled bush-like structure, um, reducing the amount of synaptic connections in the brain. Now, um, you know, the last you know decade or 50 years or whatever, a lot of the scientists have always assumed that you know, low serotonin levels were at the root of people's struggle with depression and anxiety. Well, actually, recent research has been linking uh, glutamate excitotoxicity to a number of illnesses, um, including autoimmune diseases, uh, neurodegenerative diseases, um, and other pathologies like, such as depression, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, um, a lot of things. So, why is this? Well, as I mentioned before, when the dendrites start to shrivel and be destroyed, there's less synaptic connections. So if there's less synaptic connections, that means overall there's less serotonin and dopamine being transported from one cell to another. So this, as far as I'm concerned, can actually mimic the effects of having low neurotransmitter levels such as serotonin and dopamine. So perhaps the problem is not that the person is not making enough neurotransmitter, but perhaps the problem is glutamate excitotoxicity causing oxidative stress and damage and inflammation, which is destroying the structure of the nerve cell itself reducing the amount of synaptic connections, thus inhibiting communications between neurons or nerve cells. So, it's not good. <laughs> so what type of things can cause um, glutamate excitotoxicity? Well, uh, there are certain nutritional deficiencies that have been found to be associated with glutamate toxicity. Um, some of these uh, specifically are folate, B6, B12, and 
those sorts of nutrients. They can contribute to the buildup of something called homocysteine, uh, which is normally supposed to be metabolized to create SAMI, but um, when there's not those essential nutrients to help carry that pathway along its normal process, then it can contribute to glutamate toxicity or neurotoxicity, essentially. Other things that can cause glutamate toxicity are head traumas, spinal traumas. Um, you know, excessive glutamate activity is primarily sort of what causes the nerve damage when you have that sort of neurological injury. Um, also, deficiency in magnesium, because magnesium, interestingly enough, acts as uh, an antagonist where it actually blocks the glutamate receptor and can prevent overexcitation from happening. So, you know, how do you uh, help glutamate toxicity? Well, um, you should also try to avoid foods that have a large amount of free glutamates in them. Um, some examples of this are wheat, dairy, uh, soy, fermented foods, and foods with MSG. MSG actually stands for monosodium glutamate. And what can happen is you have all these free-floating glutamate molecules and they can contribute to having an abundance of glutamate and then you kind of, you know, it's like a party going on in your nerve and it's all fun and games until it gets fried out and doesn't work properly anymore. So, uh, again, what can you do about this? Well, uh, there are certain supplementation, um, you know, protocols that you can take. Like I said, making sure that you're not deficient in magnesium, uh, folate, B6, or B12 is really important. Uh, also, avoiding the foods that I just previously mentioned. And um, there have been, there's been some research recently on uh, blueberry compounds called anthocyanins and they have been found to reduce this excessive glutamate activity and prevent the oxidative damage and inflammation that can be incurred by excessive glutamate activity. Another really uh, cool plant-based molecule is something called curcumin, uh, which comes from the spice turmeric, and it has also been found to reduce this excitotoxicity toxic, toxic um, occurrence. So yeah, if you feel like you have glutamate excitotoxicity or, or depression or any sort of mental illness um, that you want to try and resolve nutritionally, I would suggest taking those steps. And also I'd recommend watching our other blog on nutritional uh, deficiencies and how they are linked to mental illness and depression as well. So hope you enjoyed our talk and uh, hope you have a great day. Thanks for listening and again I'm Caitlin from Entheozen and feel free to visit our website and check out our products that have been formulated with all of the things that we talk about in our video blogs in mind. So have a good one. Bye.